am i audible yes yes you can start awesome okay hello everyone welcome uh, good afternoon uh, to today's microsoft 365 copilot and viva days uh, the 2024 edition first of all i would like to thank the sponsors and the organizers uh, who has spent time in organizing this wonderful event uh, nowadays uh, in a way, everything is about Copilot. Everything is about, uh, you know, Microsoft Viva around that. And uh, most of the topics which we are seeing or most of the attraction which we are getting uh, is around how we would be able to use the generative AI capability in the different flavors of products which are available. And as we are into Microsoft technology stack, we are specifically talking about Microsoft. So as you all know, um, this is just uh, a one day virtual event. OK, uh, we would encourage and we would request to be till end of the event. Uh, there is a quiz which is organized by the organizers and there are some win, uh, very good, exciting prizes to be won and all of the uh, questions which would be uh, asked as a part of the quiz would be from the sessions which we are uh, currently going through. Right with that, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, uh, I'm Siddharth Vakasya. I'm a technical consultant and a founder at Binary Roots, where we provide services around Microsoft 365 technology stack, specifically in SharePoint, Teams, App, Power S, Power Platform, etc. Uh, these are some social handles of my personal website through which you would be able to connect with me. Today, along with me, I have Punch. Punch, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Siddharth. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the event. Uh, my name is Kunj, and I'm an M365 consultant. Uh, I'm a freelancer. Uh, these are a few of my social media handlers. You can connect with me uh, for any of the issues. Thank you. Thank you, Punch. So today what we are going to talk, what we are going to learn. So the topic for today is harnessing the powers of uh, power of uh, Copilot plugin actions, right? Uh, so what we will do is we will set up some background uh, in and around Copilot. Uh, then we will see what are the different plugins which are available. And then we will specifically deep dive into our topic, which is the plugging action in Copilot Studio. And I would have, we would have Kunj who would be showing us some cool demos around, you know, creating or using the Copilot uh, plugin actions within the Copilot Studio. Now, before we go, as I said, let's spend, you know, a couple of minutes to understand what is the impact of generative UI, which is coming around chatbots, right? Uh, with open AI and uh, the capability or the functionality of the open AI and the output which we are seeing in the previous session, we have seen, you know, the codex, which is uh, also part of the open AI uh, LLM model itself, one of the LLM model where we are able to generate the code, we are generate, we are able to fix the code, we are able to generate the documentation. There are so many use cases which are getting opened, right? And in similar cases, one of the prime use case of you know, the open AI capability is the generative. It means it is able to generate something based on the data which has been provided to it. Now that data which is provided is part of the LLM models which we have, but when it understands the context of the user's queries, or if it understands the actual uh, query which user is asking in a natural language way, it is able to respond to that, but it's also not able to respond, but it's also able to give you a personalized enter on top of it, right? And the good thing about this is that it is actually learning from the data and based on the data and based on the feedback, it is able to continuously improve it. So there is a concept of prompt engineering where I personally have uh, tried to use certain uh, features of the chat GPT or the open AI where it is not able to respond or I the, the answer I was asking was not, uh, you know, what I was expecting, right? And that is where the concept of prompt engineer comes into picture. It means if you are able to give a right and accurate prompt, which is to a set of instruction to the uh, chat GPT that, okay, this is what I need. Uh, this is what you have to answer. Uh, in this format, you have to answer and this works wonders, right? It means it is able to do it. And on the same capability itself, if you see, uh, the co-pilot for uh, GitHub, which we have seen, uh, is able to generate the content because in a way, if you want to also try, if you go to chat GPT and if you ask, you know that, okay, give me a customer data object, but give me in the form of the JSON, right? Or give me in the form of the XML or give me in the form of a normal text, then it would be able to give you that. So you have to give a specific interaction and that is the uh, power of prompt engineering where you will be able to do that. Now with that, what happened is, uh, everybody wanted to start or do a hands-on or trying to find a use case on using this capability of open AI uh, within their organization, right? But what they wanted to do, 
chat gpt or open ai which is available is able to work on the public data which is available it right now the latest models which are there it has been trained as of data from january 2023 right it means it is able to respond to any data which is within january uh, till january 2023 so if you need a latest data there are options available you have age browsers plugins there are some other plugins which are available through bing which will give you still the capability of using the chat gpt but with the latest data in itself right but we as in professionals we as in organizational users what do we wanted to do we wanted to have the co-pilot or same kind of capability to be used around our own organizational data right and that is where uh, you know the copilot studio comes into picture which is basically the custom gpt and uh, what will happen is uh, with using with the copilot studio and the low code conversational ai solution which we have uh, it will be able to unlock new capabilities of the customization and new workflow orchestration which would be done now let's quickly go and understand uh, you know different co-pilots which are available okay so this is very important there are so many flavors of co-pilot which is there and what happens is specific to uh, a use case or specific to uh, and product or specific to a particular platform which is available there are different co-pilots so right now what we have seen in the previous session was and co-pilot which was for the github so if you see here we have a co-pilot which would be able to integrate within the github which is integrated with our uh, ID environments through which you would be able to generate the code, right? And when we talk about the modern workplace or when we talk about the Microsoft 365 Copilot specifically, uh, they are the Copilots which is available as a part of your Microsoft 365 product, of course, with extra licensing cost, which is per user licensing cost, but it allows us to use the Microsoft 365 Copilot around SharePoint, Teams, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, all of that, right? Now, when it comes to uh, the business application side of the things, the co-pilot, uh, we have seen that with Dynamics 365, which is one of the portion of the business application, there are co-pilot available, which is co-pilot for sales, co-pilot for customer insight. It means within that application itself, then there is a specific use case on which that co-pilot has been developed, which will give you uh, response or the context based on the dynamics data which you have right and then there is a co-pilot around power platform which is will be able to help you to create certain apps okay so if you are using co-pilot for power apps you would be able to naturally uh, give uh, the instruction to the co-pilot for power apps and it would be able to generate the power app screen you to be able to generate the power app uh, database schema it means data verse schema if it is power automate it would be able to create a power automate for you also so in a way think about you know before that what microsoft was giving us it was giving us certain templates which were available which were some general or specific uh, use cases which you every organization would need and what we were doing is we were starting using the template because we know that our custom app which we are trying to build would be specific to it's in and around you know 20 percent 25 percent in and around what we are trying to achieve with the template right now with the copilot that changes what we can do is if we don't have a template which is available we can still use copilot and we can give the instruction and it would be able to start or give us a baseline through which we would be able to create and then extend on top of it right and then uh, there are of course other copilots within windows 11 there are uh, copilot for security also for sentimenters defenders and intune uh, then for browsers and search there are copilot which is available within your edge browser within your bing also uh, in fact there is a copilot within skype also through which you would be able to get the response so so all of these are flavors of the copilot okay and where does copilot studio in a way comes into picture is to create a custom gpt now when i say to create a custom gpt means what it means that all of the copilot which we have seen which are part of your microsoft 365 are attached to a particular product right now what if you wanted to create your custom copilot okay which is a custom gpt but specific to your use case so which is not outside of any of them but still you would have a capability or a feature to add that to your microsoft 365 copilot as an extendability option or you can use it as a standalone also okay but before we go there okay one thing we have to understand is that copilot studio which we are talking about right now is a rebranded of power virtual agent so if you are already aware of power virtual agent 
it has been replanted at copilot studio by adding the generative ai capability to the power virtual agent so typically the way we were creating the power virtual agent which was using topics which was using uh, different different flows in there and different actions available within the topics same way now because we have a node or before we have an action within our copilot studio where it is able to generate answers and use the capability of chat gpt it has been rebranded at copilot studio it means we would be able to create our own custom gpt or custom copilot on top of it okay uh now let's just spend some time in understanding different types of plugins which are available okay uh, we will see uh, kunj will show you some of the plugins which through which you would be able to extend the copilots okay uh, but just to get an over um, just a brief about you know different kinds of plugins there is one plugin which is called conversational plugin uh, which is uh, wherein you would be able to uh, create the plugins uh, in a natural conversation language way it means you would be able to tell hey i need this i need this based on that a plugin would be created which can be added as in microsoft 365 copilot then there are four different types of ai plugins which is available now when i say four types of ai plugin means they are more or less in a way used for on top of the ai builder capabilities which we had wherein it would be able to uh, create the plugin based on a specific topic it means if you need to create a specific topic which automatically would create a specific topic for you then the content and insights would generate a content or insight based on the input which user has given if you want to deep dive or create a complex scenario you can create an ai plugin which is called a task which they have renamed uh, recently renamed as task wherein you would be able to call in power automate flow from there and the power automate flow within power automate flow you would be still be able to do whatever we were used to do you would be able to get the items you would be able to update the items you would be able to uh, do integration with any external system which is available right and then the fourth one being which is very important is the data which is based on the custom connectors right and then of course you can also create an open ai plugin you can also use your azure board framework which is uh, you know a core uh, development based frame framework through which you would be able to create an board on top of the uh, teams or different channels which are available that also can be added as a plugin so if you already have some boards which are already been created before uh, you know before you have creating a new one you can add this as a plugin so that it can add a specific piece of functionality within there and then we have plugin actions now what is plugin actions right so basically as i told you copilot studio when we create a copilot which is our custom copilot uh, will respond to the user based on the topics uh, and then within that topic we can create different different topics which are available and within that topic what we will get is we will be able to write our own custom logic on what do you want to do so for example if user is asking that hey tell me uh, tell me what is the weather like right now for example right it means what you are saying is that my topic trigger point is the user might ask for the weather it can be what's it uh, what's the environment in pune today so there are this different context but in here you would have to mention this different topics or different variants of the user message through which the context can be understood and then that particular topic or that topic would be triggered and then you would write your logic to respond based on that particular topic right now with plugin actions that changes what you can do is you can create some reusable plugin actions okay they can be used to respond to user query automatically using generative actions so within whatever the user is asking based on that context the copilot studio would know which plugin to be called okay and based on that you would be able to respond it so it means using a concept called dynamic chaining through which if the plugin action has a specific uh, description or if we have given some detail which we will see in the next slide it would know that if the user is asking this it means that he is talking about getting a weather and if it is about getting a weather that particular plugin action would be called and that plugin action within that plugin action you would be actually connecting to your any of the connectors which are available which are out of the box connectors and if not you can also create your or use your custom connectors right now this is what we are talking about automatically being able to generate but what if you need a specific scenario wherein you wanted to 
create a plugin action, we, you wanted to call them explicitly. That is also possible. It means the way the topic is been triggered would be same way the how you are doing it with your power virtual agent, but then you would be able to explicitly call that plugin actions within your topics. And based on that, the plugin action would be able to respond to the user. OK, and how you can create it, you basically would be able to also create the actions with using the existing power platform component. As I said, now in here, the power platform component means all the connectors which are available within power platform. If not, you can create your uh, new uh, component. When I say new component, it means you can create your custom connector. It means you would be able to integrate it with any of the third party APIs which are available. Right now, what are the three main components of plugins? You have to understand one thing that when we talk about plugin actions, if we understand what are these three components and what is the use or uh, what is the difference between them, uh, plus how you have to utilize that, then that is the base step of understanding the plugin action and how you are going to create a plugin action, right? So it's detail, input, and output. Okay, so. Uh, keep in mind that every plugin action would have these three main components which you would have to configure when you are creating a plugin action, right? Now, what would be the details? Okay, on the right hand side, what you are seeing here is one of the plugin action, which is nothing but getting and SharePoint get items. It means we know that within Power Platform we have a connection, a connector which is to go to SharePoint and the get items, right? Now, when we talk about SharePoint get items, what it is going to do? It is going to go query that particular list and return us the data. Now you would be able to pass the uh, parameter or anything to it, which we will talk about it. But the main purpose of this action is to go and query the data. OK, now this is where it is important uh, and we have to understand is that first thing is the plugin action name, which you can uh, give it based on your convenience. OK, the important thing here is the model display name and the model description. OK. Consider both of these a way for you to give instruction to the uh, chat GPT or the Copilot Studio when to call this action. So in case if you need to automatically call and um, plug in action, then these two fields should be very important. OK, and believe me why I'm telling it is I had personally experienced when I was trying the plug in action for the first time and I was trying this dynamic chaining. What I did is I kept my model display name and description as it is. OK, and I knew that I am going to query a particular list, which was a request list. OK, but because the model description is very general in nature, what you are seeing right now is get items from the SharePoint list. When I was asking, OK, get me uh, data from the request list, it was not able to call that plugin action. Why? Because I had not given the description correctly. So this is our way to give the chat GPT a description or an instruction to the model when to call this plugin action. And once you do that, OK, we will see that example. Kunj will show how you can give that kind of instruction. But why specifically I have written is that or put this screenshot here is that if you are trying this, don't keep the display name and the model description as it is what you have. Change it based on the context and think about what is user is going to type when he's going to ask and where do you want to trigger this plugin and based on that uh, you can uh, respond right so this will help in dynamic chaining it means it will automatically call you don't have to specifically call it right and you also get an option where for example if you would have a plugin wherein it is updating something in the database or in your sharepoint or anywhere right uh, you don't want to execute it immediately Right. When I say execute immediately, it means that because you are updating the data, you might want to ask user and confirmation that, hey, are you sure you wanted to update the status to something else? Then if the user says yes, then only it will call. If you want to do that, there is a confirmation option where you can say ask the user before running this action. It means it will double check the user once and then only it will do it. And why do you need this is because we are talking about dynamic chaining. It means that the plugin action is going to be called automatically based on the user query where we don't have control which one to call, right? So to make sure that if there is an update happening, we should use and uh, this option to uh, ask user to run or get the confirmation before you run that particular action. Second thing is input. Now input is uh, any parameter which you want to pass to your 
uh, connector, right? It means uh, in this case, it is a SharePoint get item. So now if you think about it, if you know or if you are aware with the SharePoint, the base thing when you say SharePoint get item, the first thing you wanted to give is the SharePoint site URL from where you want to get data. Second, you wanted to get or configure the SharePoint list. And then there are some optional parameters which are you can pass the filter, you can uh, select the view, uh, you can select the top count, all these parameters. Now, all of these parameters, where it is defined, it is defined in the connector, right? Because the connector right now, which we are talking about is the SharePoint connector. And because it is out of the box connector, we don't get to choose what we have, but in a way it is based on the SharePoint REST API. So this is important. Now, what you can do from here is, uh, first thing is uh, the name, of the parameter if you are creating a custom this thing then also it is important because it will help you to generate the question right in here what they have that is they they have renamed the sharepoint list which is our input to sharepoint get items uh, connector to data set and list to table it means more or less it is data set because this has to be generic when we are talking about dataverse we don't uh, say SharePoint list, right? It would be a dataverse table. When we're talking about SQL, it would be a SQL table. Then that is why this is the general term, which is data set. But in our case, nothing but a SharePoint list. And then the table is, uh, sorry, this is the SharePoint site URL. And then this is the table. In our case, is a SharePoint list. Okay. Now, in here, you have an option wherein you can say, if you want to ask user, what should be the input and if you want to pass that input to your action that also can be done so if you see there are two different options and i specifically have changed and took a screenshot wherein in the first one i'm saying that i wanted to set the value okay it means we as a developer will set the value i don't want user to tell me that to go and look out for which sharepoint site or from which uh data was right uh so what i will do is i will i can hard code this i can overwrite this if not then you can say dynamically fill in with the best option. It means that the bot or the chat GPT will ask as soon as it knows that, okay, this action has to be created and doesn't have that value. It will ask to the user, hey, tell me which is the, uh, what is the input you wanted to do or which list you wanted to query, okay? And based on that, you would be able to uh, respond. Uh, based on that, the question would be generated. So it means you have an ability to set the default value of the input or you would have an ability for the user to query from there. And then there is an output. So now output is interesting, right? Because there is a way wherein you can just directly say tick mark and say, okay, respond to the user after running this section. It means what would happen is based on whatever would the output. For example, if I'm saying that, okay, give me all the items from a SharePoint list called request, right? It is going to go and query. And then based on that, it automatically will tell you the answer. It is not going to respond in a JSON object, right? Because we are talking about a capability wherein we wanted to respond in the natural language, right? So it means it will say, here are the items from the SharePoint list. It will mark it as a bullet point. It will use three to four columns like name, uh, request name, uh, assigned to request date, something like that. And it will be able to respond it automatically. But if you want, don't want to use the generative AI capability for this particular action, you would have an option to override that where you can send your own custom message, wherein you would still get the message generated by the chat GPT or the uh, this thing, uh, Copilot, and then you would be able to modify it and on top of it, you would be able to send. If you want, you can also send adaptive cards. Uh, also, if you want to send the response and then also use the output further for a different action or based on your logic, then you can use uh, wherein you would be able to store that output into a variable and use that responses somewhere else also. So this is what the output is all about. Now with that, I would hand it over to Kunj, uh, who would be taking us through uh, the demo of how different how to use this plugin actions with the custom connectors there are some interesting use cases which can come up with what you are going to see today so think about it explore in such a way that consider you are creating a co-pilot and if you are not deep dived into or if you don't have that deep dive ai capability on how to use that then this low code platform which is a co-pilot studio to create your own custom gpt or co-pilot is a way to go over to you Kunj. thank you Sudan. Uh, I hope my screen is visible. Yes. Okay, perfect. So now uh, I think from from the first session itself, you might be listening Copilot, Copilot, Copilot. So very important, we should understand how we can create our own custom Copilot. And that is what important. Like that is what we are here for. 
because we as a developer we want to customize things we want to develop things right so for that uh, we can leverage the low code platform which is the copilot studio and to navigate to copilot studio we use a link called as web.powerva.com sorry powerva.microsoft.com uh, it gives you a 30 day free license if you don't have it so you can utilize those 30 days to create your own custom copilot studio bot and uh, understand the concepts and learn of learn around it okay now, once you navigate to this link, uh, you will be presented to the home page wherein we can create a custom copilot as you can see, or we can extend the Microsoft copilot. So when we say extend a Microsoft copilot, that means we are talking about Microsoft 365 copilot, which is the copilot which is available as a part of our uh, Office 365 apps, okay, or rather Microsoft 365 apps. But for today's session or demo, we are going to create a custom copilot. So when I click on custom copilot, I would be asked to select the copilot name. So here I can give, for example, copilot and Viva days. Next thing which we see over here is the language. So now if you understand there are many languages which are available around 23 languages are available and uh, we can select any of this language as our primary language. Okay, we can extend the languages. So we need to understand that this is not the only language which would be available, but this is the primary language of your bot so that your bot would understand this as the first language. Okay, then we can give custom website if we want. Like if you want to fetch the data from custom website, I can provide that. But if you go to advanced option, we need to understand where this copilot is getting stored. The copilot is getting stored in the dataverse. So you need to have a dataverse as well in your environment to save your copilot. OK, and it gets stored in a solution. So we can uh, store it in a different solution. If, if I want to have multiple copilot based on different solutions, I can create that. OK. And we have a schema name. This is used for storing that. So this is where our copilot is stored. This is how we can change the icon. And once I click on this, it will create a custom copilot for me. So by just a single click, I can create a bot and this bot can be used across multiple channels. OK, so. Uh, it can be used as a part of our website so we can integrate this bot directly in our website. We can uh, use it as a part of our team's application as well. So it could be exposed to team application as well. So there's something called as channels, which is still not enabled. So once your copilot is generated, uh, there would be multiple things which would be available. One of them is topics. So if you see, there are multiple topics which are already created for us, like greetings, goodbye, so there are a few lessons, simple topic, start over, thank you. All these topics are automatically generated. So these are sample topics which are generated for us. And there are system topics as well, like on the conversation start, on redirect, on talk to agent, on sign in. So these are all system topics which we cannot delete. And it is part of the system itself. Like these are very important for system to use and design. Okay. So now I was talking about channels. So you see there are multiple channels which are available. We can use it in Teams, demo website, custom website. We can use it in Facebook, Skype, Slack, Twilio. So all of these channels are available. Hence, this is a low code platform which helps us develop bot easily and can be published in multiple channels. Now, this, this all things were available as a part of Power Virtual Agent as well. But when we are talking about Copilot Studio, what are the additional things which are available? So the additional things which are available are the generative AI things. So if you see, uh, these are the AI plugins, conversational plugins, action plugins, plugin actions, which we are going to see in detail. OK, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll understand the plugin, different types of plugins first in details. So first plugin is the conversational plugin. So how can we develop conversational plugin? So to develop conversational plugin, what we can do is we can go back to our uh, application. In this, there, if, if we extend Microsoft Copilot 
So this is still in preview. Please note this is still in preview. Uh, we can go to conversational plugin and click on add conversational plugin. So this can extend our Microsoft 365 bot. OK, so I can just specify that get list of all the SharePoint sites. For example, OK, and then I can have an action or I can have an HTTP request which I can call so I can have my SharePoint URL uh, which I can call get list of all the SharePoint sites and then I can send a message specifying that OK. Uh, I, I can get this response in a new variable. I can store it and I can just say that OK, whatever I'm getting as a part of this response, please send it as a message. So once this is saved, this is part of the conversational plugin. So now whenever a user asks something called as uh, something around SharePoint's list of all the SharePoint sites. Microsoft 365 Copilot would understand that, OK, I need to trigger this conversational plugin and I need to call the API and send the response. OK, so this is how we can extend the first conversational plugin type. OK, the type of plugin. Then we have another AI types of plugin, so we will uh, go through this uh, one by one. The first one is specific topics. OK, so how can we create specific topics for that? We need to go back to our. Home page OK in the home page, there's something called as extend. Hmm? In extend, we have power add power platform components and inside that we have something called as specific topics. So this is nothing but similar topics which we had but we can specify which topic we are talking about. So this could be a generic topic which could be used across all our copilot. OK, so this is very useful in case if you want to have some generic topic which could be used across like for example, if you want to have a greetings which is similar for all the copilot, you can have a greetings one. If you want to say thank you in a specific manner, you can have a thank you uh, conversational plugin and use it across all your copilots and uh, delete the existing topic for thank you. OK, so this is another specific topic plugin which we have. Uh, then we have content and insights plugin. OK, so content and ins insights plugin was previously called as uh, I will just show you. So this is uh, recently rebranded. Previously it was called as generate content or extract insights. It is nothing but a, a kind of. Uh, prompt OK or rather a system prompt. Uh, there are uh, templates which are available so we can summarize the text, extract information. For example, if I want to summarize the text, OK, so this is a prompt which is aut automatically generated. It says please summarize the given text in and this text will be dynamic. OK, so if I give some text, for example, I have some. So this I have taken it from one of the example. I can click on test prompt and this will provide me. A summary of what I have given in this text. OK, so this is how we can then uh, give the name of the prompt and use it in our. As a type of a plugin, OK, in our copilot. Let us just wait for a second for it to get generated. Yes. And we can even change this prompt. We can say that please summarize in one line. OK, we don't want it to be in more lines. So then it would just summarize it in one line. See, it just gives us like less number of characters. We can specify the number of characters as well and just save this prompt. And it this this is nothing but a, a system prompt which we have. Then the other uh, type of plugin which we have is called as tasks. OK. Now to create the task, we again go back to our add power platform components. There is something called as task. If I click on it, it navigates us to a power automate. So if you see it creates a power automate for us and there are two. So first is a trigger which comes up, which is called as runner flow for co from copilot and the other one which we have is called as respond to copilot. OK, so here we can add the input and get the uh, text which is uh, getting sent by the user or the prompts which we can get it and then we can respond to copilot. So this is a blank canvas kind of thing. You can do anything which you want. You can have all your actions which we have in our power automate 
it could be very helpful and it like it could make your life very simple. You can extend your copilot in any way you want. OK, so this was another kind of uh, plugin which we have. Last but not the least from the AI plugin which we have is the data custom connector. So for the data custom connector, uh, it is nothing but the custom connector which we have in our power automate or power platform. So in power platform, we have a section called as custom connector. If you want to connect to a different uh, data from the API point of view, we can create custom connector and we can leverage this. OK, so today in our demo, we are going to use this and understand how we can leverage custom connector in our Copilot Studio, OK, using plugin actions. Then we have OpenAI plugin. So as we all know, there are different kinds of model which we have in OpenAI like uh, GPT 3.5, GPT 4. We can leverage all of this uh, models and how we can do is we can just click on add an OpenAI plugin and just give the manifest file. OK, once we give the manifest file, it would understand everything that OK, we are plugging in a GPT model to this. So if you can consider when I created a bot, for example, if I go back to my copilot and Viva days 2024, it is not a GPT based plugin. I cannot ask that. OK, who is the PM of India? It will not understand this. Why? Because it is not connected to any of the LLM models right now. It is not connected to OpenAI GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. So it will not give me any answer. It says I'm sorry, I don't understand. OK, it just understands what is there in the topics and nothing else. But to make it more a uh, kind of uh, similar to chat GPT, we can involve OpenAI plugins and make it more uh, similar to chat GPT. OK, so for that we have OpenAI plugin available. Then to extend uh, all our uh, skills, there's something called as Azure Bot Framework. For that we go to. OK, if I if I go to AI plugins. This is. Hey, could, sorry to interrupt. You have only 10 minutes left. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So to extend uh, our Azure bot framework, there's something called a skills. OK, in the Azure bot framework, we can create skills and add the skills over here. OK, so this is how we can leverage all these different types of plugins in our copilot. But today for our demo, we are going to understand plugin actions. OK, so plugin actions is similar to actions which we have in our Power Automate, right? In Power Automate, it is divided into two sections. One is called as trigger and the other one is called as actions. So all the actions which we have in Power Automate is part of actions, plugin actions, OK? And to create a plugin action, we need to go to actions and click on create. Here we will be able to see all the actions which are there in Power Automate. So if you see, we have all the actions. So these are all the actions. But for the demo, what we have done is we have leveraged some API. So there are some orders API which we have created custom order API. So this order API has uh, the ID of the order, the order amount, the order status. So these are few fields which we have added. These are the important fields which we have. And we can. Uh, use APIs to create the order, update the order, list all the orders, delete the orders. OK, so what we have done is we have created a custom connector called as orders. If I edit this, I will quickly show the order definition. So we have added get orders, create order, delete order, update order. So these are the four APIs which we have and we will leverage this actions because we know custom connector is also part of an action, right? If I go to my power automate, I can create an uh, I can use this as an action, right? Because we have added it as an action. If there is some trigger, I can also add trigger, but we are uh, using actions because it is called as plugin actions, right? So how we can do it? I can go to custom connector. I can filter custom connector and I can search orders. OK. And I can list all the orders. For example, if I select get orders, OK? It will ask me that OK, please first connect to the get orders and. 
see it it says that okay you're connected next if there is any uh, input output i don't have any input output because for get orders i want to list all the orders i'm not of getting specific order by id okay so i'm listing all the orders and i'll just create click on finish now if i click on list all orders i just want to understand from all of you will i be able to get the answer or uh, will i be able to get the response quickly if you can uh, specify in the chat window whether you will be able to uh, list all the orders or not if anyone can answer i'll just wait for one second no reply okay let us try if i say list all orders yes no i i see no why no because currently my copilot studio has not been enabled like we have not enabled the dynamic chaining okay what is dynamic chaining so to understand dynamic chaining let me go to the generative ai section and go to dynamic chaining so dynamic chaining is something for example if i specify some prompt over here if i want to understand where i want to go dynamically without specifying that okay uh, this should be understand first this should be the second this should be the third this is how you should like what should be the order and all those things for that if i want to do it dynamically we just enable dynamic chaining and click on save now just by doing this we would be able to list all the orders now if you see list all orders will give me answer to all the orders which i have in my database see it it go it says that okay i am going to this dynamic chaining i am going to get orders and i am fetching all the orders from my database okay this is so much powerful like this can be leveraged in many of the applications and we can utilize and create multiple uh, bots use it in uh, many different applications okay now not only list all the orders we can update the orders as well okay so because we have less time let me quickly go to my existing bot which we have created So now if you see there is no uh, like currently I haven't specified anything, but if I say that update order. Now this bot will understand that I am talking about updating the order, but to update the order, I would require some inputs, which is what is the order ID of that bot, right? Sorry, what is the order ID uh, for that particular order which I want to update? So I will go and copy the order ID and paste it over here. The other input would be the order status, right? What is the status of that order? Whether it is completed, in progress. So for now, if you see my order is in progress and I want to make it completed, OK? So I can just specify completed and it will understand that, OK, this is the order ID. This is the status of the order and it will update the order. I will just refresh my database and if I go and check. See, it says completed from in progress, right? So this is how we can leverage it. Uh, if you see, if I edit this, there was no confirmation prompt. As Siddharth mentioned, there was no confirmation prompt uh, like uh, as the user before running the this action. Yes, uh, that's the reason it was not asking it. But if you want to have that also enabled, we can do that. So that uh, before updating any data or deleting any data, we just have a confirmation that, OK, I am deleting some data or I'm uh, updating it. Not only this, the very powerful feature of this Copilot Studio is the language. OK, now my prim primary language is English, but I can extend this bot to a secondary or like we can have multiple languages. One of them is Hindi, which is currently configured. OK, now to leverage Hindi, in my copilot studio or in my bot i can just change the language from here i can change it to hindi and now i can ask my same action list all the orders in 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 hindi okay which is sabhi adesho ki suchi banaiye so this i have used uh, google translate to get it and now 
it will understand that i need to go to get orders without me informing anything right i have not done anything i have just added this plugin action which is get or orders it it understood that okay i have to go to this plugin action and i have to get all the orders so this is how we can leverage multiple language in our copilot studio as well like creating this custom copilot we can even translate the data as well we can even translate the data which we are seeing uh, by using uh, so what siddharth mentioned we can have the model description which is very important right we can specify that okay translate the text coming from the data you can save this copy this again execute this hopefully this will translate the data coming from our api okay yeah for some reason it was not like my prompt was not proper but if i have a proper prompt yes uh, this this would be able to translate the data so this is how we can leverage all different types of plugins in our copilot studio bot which we have created so uh, okay uh, we'll quickly go through the licensing part uh, for the copilot studio we would yeah just just two minutes uh, i won't take much time uh, just uh, for the licensing part 25000 messages uh, $200 after every 25000 message it would cost you to $200 again how this message is calculated 25000 if you are not using any gen ai feature it is one message or rather whatever a bot is responding you is a message if you are using some gen ai feature for example we are using this it would calculate two messages okay because it is going for the generative ai feature so that is how it will it will calculate two messages and uh, the total number of messages is calculated a uh, microsoft 365 copilot is a different which which requires thirty dollars per user per month. That is that is a different uh, uh, copilot which we have, not a copilot studio bot which we are creating. And we have copilot studio for Teams, which is free, 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 but it does not have the Gen AI feature. Okay, so if you want to leverage uh, simple topics and you want to create a simple bot, go ahead and create it for uh, using copilot studio for Teams. It is free. Uh, this are a few of the reference which we have. You can just take a screenshot if you want. Uh, these are very helpful. And uh, thank you. Thank you all the sponsors. Thank you for all the attendees for listening to us. Uh, being being present in Saturday, I know it's very difficult. Uh, and uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. That's it from my side. Yeah. Thanks for your insightful session.